Ай, ну, 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 ай, бай, 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 и живе барин на краю, он не беден, не богат, а на горница ребят. Все по лавочкам сидят. Ай, лю 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 Ай, ну 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 Ай, бай 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 Прилетели гули. И сели на люли, стали гули гуроковать, и малышечку качать. Ай, лю 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 Ай, ну 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 Ай, бай 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 Май, май, май. Hello. Beautiful, beautiful. So, so thank you so much. So you could just go on to the to the next song, do the same thing, introduce, and uh -huh. then and then we'll uh, come together later with, for some question and answers. All so, right. So uh, perfect. That was beautiful. I'm not seeing anybody, so I'm feeling kind of I'm alone here. You are. You're all alone. It's okay. It's okay. Here. We're with you. We're with you in spirit. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so next one is called Vasya Rosa Palivaya. Vasya is the name of the boy, and Rosa in, in Russian means rose. So mom called his uh, her son my lovely rose, uh, my field rose. And also uh, a lot of words in Russian lullabies about cats. Asking cat to um, sit with the baby, uh, get him sleep, and um, soothing the baby. And in that time, the people believe cats are getting a bad energy from the house, and they can get bad energy from the child. So it's a lot of words about cats in um, most of the Russian lullabies. <clears throat> Вася роза поливая, Вася ландыш из ручья, Баю, баю, Васеньку, ба. Вася ландыш из ручья, Дружочек, я то люблю тебя, Баю, баю, Васеньку, ба. Я тебя давно то люблю, да я жалею то берегу, баю ба. Я жалею берегу, дружочку плакать то не велю, баю ба. Учись горькая моя. Да нет защиты то у меня, баю, баю, Васеньку, ба. Нет защиты, нет замены, да старо горе то бедная, баю, баю, Васеньку, ба. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. So you have you have two more uh, lullabies. Ah, uh, yes, I have one more. Um, one more. Can you just say the name of that, uh, just like you did before? Yeah, just introduce it. Um, it's called "Bye Bye My Dititka." Dititka means my lovely baby. Uh, and this lullaby is pretty much the same meaning. Uh, so they believe when you're 
uh, it's like a prey to the child. And actually they started to sing lullabies since five months pregnancy, because they believe the child can hear it. Uh, so, and this is kind of like a mantra to asking a child, please be healthy, please be happy, please be calm, please eat good. And it's like repetitive, repetitive, but usually it's at least 10 minutes long. So I'm, I'm singing very few verses for you. Uh, this is a, um, one song was creating for, to get uh, actually a child to sleep fully. <clears throat> Бай, баю, бай, мое дитятку, а я дитятка люблю, да новую зыбочку куплю. Уже я дитятка потешу, новую зыбочку повешу, новую зыбочку повешу, дитя спать положу. Спать положу, да в колыбелюшку, в колыбелюшку, да на постелюшку. Уж ты спи, мое дитятка, без байка дня. Уж ты спи, мое дитятка, без люка дня. Beautiful. Uh, did, did I just see a bird uh, uh, fly? Uh, the bird flying around, that's true. Uh, I put away my big cage because they start screaming with, when I'm singing. <laughs> and one got left and she's very, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Can I just ask? Yeah, yeah uh, you know, all birds are welcome here. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. She, she's, uh, let, let me get her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she flew away, okay. So uh, thank you so much. That was so beautiful. I, I just have a, a, a question. And, and in case people are just joining us, my name is Chris from the Brooklyn Arts Council and an organization called CATCH, the Center for Art, Tradition, and Cultural Heritage. This is a project called uh, Lullabies and Songs for Comfort in Folk Life. Um, this is a, a project that we're doing that also um, gets community leaders and heritage ambassadors to do research about what is the state of lullabies in their particular community. So. Um, on this call with us is a bunch of those people that are doing research in their own communities. And I, I just, Valentina, I just wanted to ask you, like, what is the state of lullabies in, uh, in the Russian uh, community or Russian communities? Is there, are there, uh, is this something people are still doing when they have a newborn? Or is it something that you did um, uh, when you were, uh, five months pregnant with your, your kids? Yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm, I was singing, uh, I'm singing nonstop actually. <laughs> my, my kids asking mom now, stop singing. I wish people will still use their own voice. Now it's too many gadgets, too many um, applications with soothing your baby, you know, that old toys, but it will never, um, how you call that in English, uh, replace the true mother voice. Uh, so I wish people will do it more. Uh, that's why I'm trying to gather uh, people once a week and teaching them old Russian songs. And everybody is welcome. It's called Russian Social Singing Club. You can find me on Facebook. And all kind of nationality language people welcome. Uh, and you can join us and participate. That's what I think. And, and the, the language is also something that you te teach to non-Russian speakers. Is that correct? In those classes? Is it, is it your, um, or do you help them with all in Russian, but I, I transcribe the songs so they can easily uh, read that. And I used to sing in a Bulgar Bulgarian choir and it was uh, in Chinese and uh, all kind of people speaking, uh, excuse my English. And uh, everybody learning, and it's nice. Yes, it's a, it's really learnable if that word exists. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. <laughs> I think that's the key here is is uh, learnability. Uh, and and you just got a you got a grant from the Brooklyn Arts Council um, this past year, this year, right? Uh, to do the Russian Social Singing Club. So uh, so 
so people can look you up on Facebook and, and find that. That's, that's yeah. excellent. Um, I wanted to maybe ask you one more question uh, about your parents, um, because you come from a long line of, of, uh, of uh, uh, musicians, singers, dancers, but also um, folklorists, you know, people uh, recording music. And could you talk a bit about how you grew up and your parents, uh, their experience? Mm. My, my father was a, a folk collector. He went to villages and recorded uh, hundreds and hundreds of old songs and he arranged them and uh, he became artistic director of uh, Don Cosa group. It's a 120 people group, uh, professional uh, ensemble. So he put beautiful arrangement for that song and they travel around the world with uh, uh, ensemble for almost 40 years, uh, 37 years he was. And my mom was a choir director and a folklorist too. So she, her prime uh, work was to arrange the song and collect the song. And I remember when I was a kid, we went together uh, in the village and some old guy uh, pushed us to make a garden for all day long uh, collecting some berries and then he gave us one song for that. So it was, a, it was quite a hard way to get the songs, uh, but it was very interesting. Now that's, that's inspiring uh, for all of us. I think that's part of the goal of this project here is to, to get people interested in looking for those songs uh, in their community. So um, thank you so much. People should know that if they're tuning in on Facebook or YouTube or um, are in this uh, meeting with us, um, Valentina will be available later on um, for a question and answer with all the artists. Um, but for now, I'm just going to um, uh, uh, not uh, rudely take Valentina off the screen. Thank so thank you, Valentina. Um, we'll see you later. Um, and before I start, I'm just going to now, as I mentioned, this, this project um, Lullabies of New York that's funded through the National Endowment for the Arts and Catch is working with cultural community leaders um, to uh, ask that question, what is the state of lullabies in their particular community? And what are the ways that um, we can uh, promote um, lullabies? Because as Hasnia said earlier, there's a really important aspect of lullabies for language retention for particular languages that are not being spoken outside of the home. So one of the great examples of that is uh, someone named Noang uh, Thurum, and I'm gonna bring him up here. Um, I'm gonna just uh, ask him to start his video. I think he's gonna do that. And Noang is an independent researcher and community activist. He works with the Himalayan communities and scholars to document languages, culture, social histories, and histories of migration to North America. He's worked on many projects and organizations such as the New York Tibetan Service Center and Voices of the Himalayas. In the, uh, in, through the Endangered Language Alliance, which is also a partner with us on this project. Um, so uh, he was uh, born in Nepal and he's now based in New York City and runs an uh, interesting weekend program introducing uh, introductory to Tibetan and Nepali. Um, so he's working on, this, working on this project with us to uh, talk about Himalayan lullaby. So I'm gonna hand it off to him. Thank you so much, Samang, for being here. Um, I'm gonna take myself off the screen and I'll let you talk and introduce the uh, artist that will be with us. Well, Josh Delay, and namaste to you all. Uh, in recent years, there has been a rapid growth in the number of immigrants from the greater Himalayan region settling, uh, settling in the US, especially in New York, where more than 20,000 people have been settled in Queens and Brooklyn. And I've been working with uh, archiving and documenting the language loss and the rapid cultural change among the Himalayan communities within the five boroughs in this last six years. And I've been excited to work with Chris Husnia and Ms. Sonam Lamo and many other cultural activists on Lullaby before the uh, pandemic started. In our Himalayan community, people use Lullaby to pass down cultural knowledge or traditions or on the other hand, to help the babies to sleep, help to regulate the emotions of the babies, foster a stronger uh, bond between babies and the parents. As I mentioned, more than 20,000 Himalayan are in New, uh, New York City, but it is very difficult to document the lullaby as only few people sing. And most of them remember a bit, but uh, the situation of the Himalayan lullaby 
uh, in the face of extinction. Uh, so we are trying our best to come up with the, some solutions or new form of lullaby that will be suitable for our Himalayan American children. And uh, now let me introduce to uh, Ms. Sunam Hamala. Uh, Sunam Hamala is a former artist, performer from the Tibetan institutions of performing art. She's dedicated and passionate about Tibetan culture preservation. She's teaching Tibetan songs, dances, and music classes to the Himalayan children in New York. Her contribution is very meaningful and significant because her songs, dance, music classes serve as a medium to engage our second generation Himalayan American children in promoting our culture. She has performed in many cities in India as well as in the United States. She also toured major cities in France, Canada, Switzerland, and other countries. So today, Ms. Sanam Lamala will sing two songs, one uh, Tibetan lullaby, and the another one is folklore songs. First song is tip, uh, Tibetan lullaby songs that uh, uh, it says about the sleep well, my dear son, you are my jewel. My heart dwells on you, my dear son. Come down, good night, my son. And sleep well, my dear son, dreams about uh, dreams about me coming in your dream and hugging me with the happiness. Sleep well, my jewel. Good night, my child. And the second song is a Tibetan folklore song. It is about the folklore associated with 11th century great, uh, great saint Milarepa. He's one of the key icons of Tibet and Himalayas, and there are many songs and plays based on his life. Today, Ms. Tanam Hamala is going to sing and praise Milarepa for his spiritual achievement and, Miller's, and in Milarepa's uh, Miller's life, we can find inspirations to keep our own inner work alive. A song helps us to subside the craziness of this strange environment of hatred, discrimination, pandemic, and so on. Her song gives the message to prevail peace, love, and harmony around the world. And here you go, Ms. Sanam Lamala. Thank you, Tashle, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to participate in this multicultural lullabies event. Uh, every man and woman were mo um, once much loved children of their parent. We have all grown up listening to the soothing uh, and loving lullabies our parents of nannies sung for us. The nature of this event itself transcends all human made boundaries, including that of race, religions, or nationality. During today's difficult time of the global pandemic, not just children, but we all need little bits to soothing our heart and minds. A comforting, caring, and motherly voice of unconditional love is what we long to listen. The Tibetan culture has long believed that the mother's love and care for children is cr critical for the child's health, physical, and psychological growth. My first song is Tibetan lullaby, which says, Sleep well, my child. Good night, my child. Sim, John, 
folk song. It is about the folklore associated with 11th century great Saint Milarepa. He is one of the greatest culture hero of Tibet and there are many songs and play based on his life. This song that I'm going to sing also praises Milarepa for his spiritual achievement and make an offering to him through melodies hunts. Oh, 
Om Hasa Puru Pensa Hum. Oh, shall you, 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 o
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. We really appreciate it. So in case you're just joining us, that was amazing. Um, and so we're going to invite you back for some question and answers. So if you're listening and watching out there on Facebook or YouTube or within this uh, webinar, um, please ask questions for Sonam. And um, that was just amazing. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so again, if you're just joining us, my name is Chris Mulay from the Brooklyn Arts Council. This is a program that's sponsored by CATCH, the Center for Art, Tradition, and Cultural Heritage. So myself, along with my colleagues, are um, on a uh, kind of an experimental quest to uh, try to understand the state of lullabies um, in New York City. Um, so on this webinar, are, you'll meet a lot of um, cultural ambassadors, heritage ambassadors um, from the tri-state area um, that are involved in asking this question about uh, lullabies. Um, but before we go into some more lullabies, I, I wanted to um, kind of round out this, uh, this program with an artist named uh, Baritha Reddy. And um, I've worked with Baritha for a long time and, and she is a, uh, she sings blues, uh, she sings uh, gospel, um, I'll just read some of her bio. She's a uh, vocalist, actress, producer, a native of Sylvania, Georgia, founder and president of Big Eyed Enterprises, Inc., where she produces the annual Big Eyed Blues Festival, as well as the Ocean Hill Folk Music Festival in Brooklyn. Um, she received the Woman of Distinction Award in 2016, as well as the induction of the New York Blues Hall of Fame. Um, so most recently, she co-hosted the Morning Blues Show on WBAI 99.5. And um, she is on a mission herself uh, to create a place uh, for people who love the blues so they don't have to leave Brooklyn to hear it. Uh, she believes that this mission is one of love uh, for a wonderful art form, and it's her attempt to celebrate and pass on the importance of blues music plays in our rich heritage. Um, so the welcome, Breather. Thanks for being here. Uh, I, you just have to unmute yourself, I think, or I could do it. There you are. Hi. Okay. Thanks for thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, so I had talked to you a bit about this program. Uh, you'll see there's a little boy that's trying to get on screen here. Uh, we have oh, another special guest. <laughs> the handsome little boy. So he'll yeah. So he'll be uh, singing some lullabies too. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I was interested in is is about not just lullabies but song in general. Um, and the aspects of song that are uh, in the music that you perform, whether it's uh, blues or spirituals, um, this sort of feeling of uh, comfort uh, that is given um, through singing songs of sorrow in the blues, there's a connection, um, or this sort of signaling or cautionary tale that is within spirituals, which is very present um, in these lullabies that uh, we've been studying. Um, sometimes there's songs that are giving messages to their uh, child about things to beware of or uh, things mm -hmm. to fear. Um, and in addition to that, I just wanted to say that your um, presence on Facebook uh, was really comforting to me. And going through this pandemic and being kind of isolated, um, I think it was like one of the, and I think I might have said this to you, I think it was like one of the only times where I felt like kind of uh, joy and, and some mm -hmm. comfort. Um, just by listening to the songs that you were posting up on uh, Facebook. Um, well, so <laughs> it's, it's, that makes me feel really uh, good. And, um, you know, that you should say that gives me a good feeling because, um, you know, that's what I'm about, you know, I know. primarily, I know. you know. So, so uh, maybe I'll, I'll get off the screen and maybe you could talk a little bit about what you do and what you're going to uh, share with us today. And uh, does that sound good? Okay. Okay. Sounds like a bit. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Marisa. Thank you, Chris. Well, um, 
actually, uh, I'm going to sing a spiritual. Uh, when I was a little girl, I didn't, I don't remember hearing a lot of lullabies, but uh, the song I'm getting ready to sing to you now, uh, like a lot of the songs I heard, well, when I was a little girl uh, down south in Sylvania, Georgia, like Chris said, my hometown, and as a little girl, um, they used to take me to the cotton field, and um, I wasn't uh, to pick cotton, of course, I wasn't um, big enough to do be of any good, pick any cotton, really. So they used to sit me under the tree until the dew dried. And then uh, they would start their work and they would just start singing these beautiful songs. And, and um, a lot of people were singing, the men, the women, I call them aunties and grandmothers, and it was always in harmony. And so among a, a, a lot of other songs, uh, the one I'm gonna sing today is Steal Away. And um, of course they would do it with a lot of harmony, but um, still away, still away, still away to Jesus, still away, still away. got long to stay my lord he calls me he calls me with the thunder the trumpet sound within my soul I ain't got long to stay oh still away Still away, still away to Jesus, still away, still away home. Oh, I ain't got no to stay. So those are the kind of songs that I heard when I was a little girl and it just, um, you know, it just, even though it was sad songs, it, it, you know, it, it just brought something out of me, you know, the, I didn't even know it when I was a little girl, uh, what this song uh, really kind of meant to some people like Harriet Tubman, for instance, uh, when she was leading some of the slaves uh, uh, to freedom and um, from Maryland up to uh, Canada. And uh, this was kind of like a decoded song uh, when she used it. And she was telling them, um, you know, that they were, they were gonna steal away in the night. And, um, you know, when they, when they heard her singing this song, they knew to get ready. I didn't realize that in that time, but it, um, I guess it's something embedded or something that it really touched me. And so, um, you know, it talked a lot about the, the struggles of, of my family and uh, my people, let's, let's put it that way people of color. So this this next song I like to do is called, um, I first heard it uh, recently and it was uh, recorded in the early 1930s uh, by Alan Lomax. Uh, he recorded a very natural singer, her name is Vera Hall, that first recorded this song. And then um, it was again recorded by Odetta and um, the 50s, early 50s. 
And the song is just still this like relevant, um, important now. And uh, so I'm going to sing it now and I'm going to um, put my little change to it. And it's called um, Another Man Done Gone. 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 I didn't know his name. 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 His knee was on his neck. A knee was on his neck. A knee was on his neck, a knee was on his neck, a knee was on his neck. Mama, I can't breathe. Mama, I can't breathe. Mama, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. They kill another man. 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 Oh, another man done gone. Another man done gone. Another man done gone. Another man done gone. Another man done Oh, another man done gone, another man done gone, another man done gone. So, and as you can see, <clears throat> that song is still re relevant today as it was 60 years ago. But um, so this last and final song I'd like to do, it's an original song, it's called Journeys. And I wrote this song about um, a long time ago, maybe 20 years ago. And uh, it developed because I was down on West 4th Street in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, I'm sorry, in uh, Manhattan. And I was getting on the subway for some reason, I, I can't really remember, but I got on and well, West 4th Street and and um, decided it was the wrong subway I needed. So I was trying to go out the subway and I went up the stairs into like a, a dead end place. And I went through the turnstile and I got stuck. And um, so, and I, and it, and it was stuck between two gates. So I couldn't get back out. So here I am. Uh, stuck in in a dead end of a West Fourth uh, uh, West Fourth subway, and uh, I'm like, what am I gonna do? So I saw this man um, uh, coming through the subway, you know, the other part that I couldn't get to, and I, I was asking him to help me. Can you help me? Could you go tell the um, the uh, the attendant that I'm stuck here? So the guy looks at me, looks me up and down. And he asked me, well, what you gonna give me? So I was like, I had nothing. You know, I had, I didn't have any money. I just had this one little gold necklace um, that I had gotten from um, a flea market, but it was uh, like antique gold and it was ancient. It was over hundred years old. So I wanted to keep it. 
but I, I felt impelled, um, compelled to give it to him, but I was so heartbroken that he wouldn't come to my aid unless I gave him something. So I penned this song, it's called Journeys. Journeys, journeys, we pass by, but we don't see faces changing and go unnoticed still they change we heard the ones we love and need as we journey journey is deep inside of you missing life missing love we go we hurt the ones we love and need on our journey Hey, mister, won't you stop? My hand is caught in this door. Help me, please. Sorry, ma'am, I have no time. The train, it comes, you see. It's number three. Journey is journey. But we can't see. You won't stop. You won't speak. You won't help. You don't see me. I pray this day will come. That day when we will run to each other and that's it journeys <laughs> Aretha, that was so beautiful thank you so much chris that was really special thank you so much for you're such a great presenter and thank you for giving us all that all that information i i i'm wondering uh you know, we're not talking about lullabies with you, but we are talking about uh, comfort that song gives. Um, but I, it seems like it, it it's in, in another part of this is the comfort it gives the singer. Um, so could you talk a bit about your experience as a singer and maybe how singing those songs like that, uh, Another Man Done Gone or, uh, you know, uh, or the, the Steal Away or, I mean, is, can you describe that? Well, uh, um, as far as steal away and those other kind of um, um, spirituals are concerned, it's like uh, when I was little and I saw all kinds of different things when I lived in Georgia, I moved to Boston when I was 12. 
But before that, I saw a lot of things that didn't appear, you know, equal. I mean, like I always say, I, I went with my mother to the dentist and um, we had to go around to the back to the colored dentist for my mom. It's not like, you know, her, her teeth didn't hurt any bad, you know, worse than anyone else. It hurt, she needed a teeth pulled or whatever, but she had to go to that dentist and right around that corner um, was a, a colored water fountain. If I was thirsty, I had to drink there. So I just remember a, a, a lot, um, those kind of instances and I couldn't quite understood it because it was like, uh, you know, what's the deal? Are we not human as well? I mean, why is there a color this and a white that? So I always kind of had that in the, the back of my mind and in my spirit and kind of stuff. So, um, you know, and, and it's the same instance, like I say, um, you know, I don't want to preach uh, doom and hatred and stuff like that because that's not what I'm about. But it just seems that when things seem to get better, it just, it still remains the same a lot. I, I didn't think that as a little girl, I would feel a certain kind of way and then I would grow up and, and become a seasoned uh, young woman and um, have these same kind of thoughts, you know? I know who I am, I, I, I know how I feel about myself, but I'm amazed of how other people view different people or view each other. And, and um, I'd rather uh, spread love than hatred. And I wish that um, that was more common, primarily. If that made any sense. Yeah, uh, no, I, 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 I'm with you. I mean, I think, uh, I, I think right now is a moment where we need to all be learning uh, from each other and, and connecting to each other. Uh, it's mandatory, definitely. you know, yes, it's, it's no longer this option that we have where, uh, yeah, let's get to understand uh, someone else or someone that might be different. It's, you know, we've got to move into this is in order to survive. Uh, yeah. We've got to come to some understanding and some some sense of peace. Um, yeah, yes, definitely. I mean, what I see the the young people doing today, um, I'm proud. I'm proud of it. That um, and just like all over the world, people are standing up for, you know, what's right. And it's not only just, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter. And I know people say every all, all lives matter, but the concentration is right now, you know, what's going on. And I'm just really happy of the world that's, you know, yeah. really concerned to make, uh, making a difference. Yeah. And I, and I hope it does. I hope so too. I hope it, I hope yeah. it uh, yeah. sticks. Yeah. Uh, because in, in New York city, I mean, it's not too long ago that we witnessed Eric Garner uh, uh, have the same uh, consequences. Um, yeah. and, and experience the same thing. And it's, uh, it was frustrating then. And uh, we, we, you know, so it's, it's kind of a relief to see that people are really uh, stepping up and, and not just people that are on the street, but people that are uh, white people that are, uh, you know, that need to rethink how we do things or institutions of how they do things. I hope this continues. I hope this isn't a... Uh, I definitely hope so too, Chris. It that would be amazing. It would be a miracle. I, you know, I, I wouldn't know how to act. <laughs> like, yeah. so you're so accustomed to this stuff. And the thing about it is, you know, you don't want to get adjusted to it. You know, all I want to do, and like a lot of other people, just want to live their lives. You know, I don't want to look look through the world with the rose colored glasses, but I don't want to be restricted or, you know, I, you know, it, it's hard to really, really kind of talk about it. Um, you know, I just want to live my life like everybody yeah. else and experience uh, what this world has to offer, you know, yeah. and, and not be denied things because of, you know, 
the way other people, other people's fears, I would say, because I can't imagine uh, why would you think that way? Right. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I appreciate you and I, I appreciate you sharing all that with us. And I, and I, I loved your, uh, your, um, it's unfortunate that, uh, your, another man done gone, uh, is, is still relevant today, but I think Vera Hall would, would, uh, uh, would smile upon your, uh, your change. I think she would, uh, would be fine with it. And, and, uh, <laughs> cause it was, uh, yeah, it was just, I liked, I liked what you did and, and thanks talking so about it. So thanks for bringing that up and, and for educating us. So, uh, continue, uh, I'll move on, um, but you'll be back later. So if people just join us, we've had the, the, the honor of, of speaking to, uh, heritage ambassadors like Baritha Reddy, um, who are doing a lot of work uh, all over the place and in New York City to preserve uh, cultural heritage and music and song and the spirit of comfort and and uh, soothing uh, the next generation. Uh, so thanks, Baritha. I'm going to move you off the screen. Okay. You'll you'll come back later. Um, okay. Fine. Thank you. So, thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah. So if anyone out there, wherever you are, uh, have any questions. Um, please feel free to chat them in the Facebook Live uh, comment section, or if you're uh, one of our attendees on Zoom, you can shoot us a question, um, and we will um, answer that towards the end. Um, but we're monitoring this, uh, so I'm going to now uh, uh, bring on Aaron Page, and uh, Aaron is going to introduce a, a wonderful artist. Aaron is part of our collective of uh, Heritage ambassadors that are uh, doing some work and trying to understand the state of lullabies in particular communities, whether it's the community that they're part of or the community that they're connected to through uh, the, the work they do. Uh, they're trying to understand what's the state of lullabies in our community um, for the next generation and, and the artists themselves. So I'll just introduce Aaron. He's an ethnomusicologist, public folklorist, and educator. He serves as the Director of Folk and Traditional Arts at Arts Westchester, where it creates public programs in collaborative partnership with many of Westchester's cultural communities. He holds a BA and MA in Ethnomusicology from Wesleyan, where he's uh, finishing his doctoral dissertation, or maybe he's done with it, I'm not sure. Um, and he's uh, spent years conducting field research in the USA, India, Malaysia, Ghana, Sri Lanka, Egypt, and Turkey. He can, you can go on and on about Aaron. We're so, uh, it's such an honor to, uh, to get to work with him. Um, so I'm going to pass it on to Aaron and he's going to introduce uh, the next artist. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, I didn't know you were going to read the whole bio. <laughs> um, I, I really want to uh, thank um, you know, Baritha and, 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 and all of the other artists for um, being with us, and for being here and for sharing these um, incredibly moving uh, songs. And I, I I also want to thank Chris and Christina for organizing what is really such a powerful um, and socially responsive program. Uh, it's, it's also been a pleasure getting to work with all of my co-heritage ambassadors and getting to know you, uh, the communities that you're working with and the projects that you're working on. Um, so very thankful for this project. Um, as Chris mentioned, I work as the Director of Folk and Traditional Arts at Arts Westchester. Uh, that's the de uh, officially designated Arts Council for Westchester County. Um, I'm also a, a scholar and a performer of Tamil language, folk popular and classical music from South India and also the Tamil diaspora. And it's actually in that context that I got to know um, Srimadi Kiruba Pillai, uh, an incredible vocalist um, who uh, I've had the fortune of getting to accompany um, on a few occasions. And uh, I'd, it's an honor for me to um, have this opportunity to introduce uh, Srimadi Kiruba Pillai, um, or who I call Kiruba Anti um, tonight. Um, Srimadi Kiruba Pillai is a virtuoso in Carnatic music and Tamil devotional song. Gifted with a rich singing voice, she graduated with a bachelor's degree in music from Anamala University and has extensive training in voice under the legendary maestro Dr. T.V. Gopalakrishnan in Chennai, India. Originally from Jaffna, Sri Lanka, Kiruba Anti lives with her family in Queens, where she performs and teaches Carnatic music and Tamil song to both children and adults. And I'd just like to take a minute to also thank uh, Kiruba Anti for um, the comfort that she's bringing to so many right now during this time. Uh, for the last uh, several months, every Friday night, 
Um, Kiruba invites anybody um, in the Tamil community um, and beyond to come and join her for uh, singing sessions in Devaram 7th and 8th century devotional Tamil hymns. Um, these are beautiful compositions, some of the most moving that I've heard, um, and I can't imagine the impact that they are having on so many people. So thank you for that work, and thank you for being here with us, and um, thank you for sharing the lullabies that you're going to share with us today. We just need to unmute you. Yes. Karuba, could you just, uh, I think we just have to unmute your mic. There we go. Perfect. Ma 
ಮಾಮನಡಿತಾನೋ ಮಗಳಂಬೂ ಚಂಡಾಲಿ ಮಾಮನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಕಲ್ ಸೊ ದ ಮದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಅಂಕಲ್ ಹರ್ಟ್ ಯು ವಿತ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ you know the old and old days like even though they heard but they heard like softly with the flowers so that means it's uh, interesting in this song tata aditaro tamarapu chandale siti aditaro savandipu chandale araro arivaro so this is a one of the folk song and there will be another folk song which is very interested i am interesting on this a uh, uh, a doctor the child, labor labor doctor actually the midwife uh, she is singing a song for the baby like uh, we need all the herbs to take care of your mom because she has to feed you so she has she has to have good nutrition so she is asking pepper ginger garlic turmeric and other herbs so it's like in the corona time we all use this herbs and everything so i'm going to sing this song also ಅರಸಿ ಪೊದಿಯೋಡು ವಂದಿರೋ ತಂಬಿ ಅರಸಿ ಮಲೈ ನಾಡು ಕಂಡಿರೋ ತಂಬಿ ನೆಲ್ಲ ಪೊದಿಯೋಡು ವಂದಿರೋ ತಂಬಿ ನೆಲ್ಲ ಮಲೈ ನಾಡು ಕಂಡಿರೋ ತಂಬಿ ಮಿಳಗ ಪೊದಿಯೋಡು ವಂದಿರೋ ತಂಬಿ ಮಿಳಗ ಮಲೈ ನಾಡು ಕಂಡಿರೋ ತಂಬಿ ಇಂಜಿ ಪೊದಿಯೋಡು ವಂದಿರೋ ತಂಬಿ ಇಂಜಿ ಮಲೈ ನಾಡು ಕಂಡಿರೋ ತಂಬಿ ಸೊ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಮೋ ಹರ್ಬ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ಲಿ ಪೇತಿ ವಾಳ ಪೇರನ್ ವಾಳ ಪೂಟಿ ವಾಳ ಪೂಟನ್ ವಾಳ ಕೊಪ್ಪರ್ ವಾಳ ಕೋಚಿ ವಾಳ ಅಮ್ಮನ್ ವಾಳ ಮಾಮಿ ವಾಳ ಸೊ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಬೇಬಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಸೊ ದ ಮಿಡ್ ವೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ and uh, and there is another uh, literature oriented music so the ragam is ananda bhairavi thalam aadi ಪಾಲನ್ ಕುಳಲಾನಿ ಪಸಿ ತಳಿದ ಎಂದು ಸೊಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾಲ್ ಪಸು ವೈತೇಡಿ ಪಯಣ ಮಿಟ್ಟಾರುಂಗಪ್ಪ ಕಾಡೆಲ್ಲ ಸುಟ್ಟಿ ಬಂದ ಕಾರ ಪಸಿ ತೇಡಿ ಮಲೈ ಮೇಲ್ ಪಸು ಮೇಯ ಆನಿರೈಗಳ ಪತ್ತಿ ವರ ಪತ್ತಿ ಬಂದ ಪಾಲ್ ಪಸುಕ್ಕ ಪಾಲ್ ಮಡು ತಂಗ ನಿರಂ ಲೈಕ್ ಶಿ ಸಾಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಶಿ ಸಾಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಓಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಫೀಡ್ ದ ಬೇಬಿ ಸೊ ಶಿ ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಅನ್ ಕೌ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮಿಲ್ಕ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಅನ್ ಪಾಟ್ ಟು ಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಿಲ್ಕ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಅನ್ ಚೇರ್ ಟು ಸಿಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಿಲ್ಕ್ golden ch- uh, chain to tie the baby cow and collect me so vaangi vanda paal pasuk vaalellam thanga niram utkand paal garaga mukali thanga niram pidithirund paal garaga pidisumbu thanga niram kandri kattathum 
தடைத்தாலும் பொன்னாலே and uh, one more special uh, song for me uh, because uh, my mother published a book uh, when she is 85 year old and she wrote a thala to padal which is the, um, the lullaby and she wrote it for jesus christ in sri lanka we hindus also we go to church and we celebrate christmas mostly um the in the jesus we always uh, think like he's a baby because the christmas is that celebration for the baby so she wrote a uh, lullaby so i am just uh, sharing with you with the same neelambari rao pararo araro arunudey palagane yesu deva palagane engal tirunayagane kanni mari petredutha kadavularul balagane tandai susaita vavaganai vandarul balagane devarellam vaal tholikka cinema songs i want to sing here uh, the film is kadpaham and the song pleasure to share with uh, what telling god gave me and uh, i can present to you thank you so much thank you for that hmm. thank you so much garuba that was beautiful that was really beautiful thank you so much for all the information you gave and 
uh, it's really uh, educational and just beautiful. I mean, you're a wonderful singer, so, so thank you so much. So I'm gonna bring you back in a second, uh, but I'm gonna uh, just ask um, if anyone's just joining us, this is a program called Lullabies and Songs for Comfort and Folk Life. I'm here with my colleague on a project called uh, Lullabies of New York City, Hasnia Huchomayorova. Hasnia, what do you what do you have to say? Any any comments? You just have to unmute yourself. I'm going to unmute you. Um, we we'll did it. What do you what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, it was beautiful, and I I would like to thank all the artists and all the participants. Uh, you know, for uh, making this happen at this moment because this is not an easy time, and uh, you know, sharing all your. Uh, your experience and then singing and also your your knowledge about others so this is what makes it lullaby very special because not everybody um sees or knows that the importance of the lullaby you know so each one of you you see like you, you everyone can tell um their 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 happiness their sorrow or their needs in life through lullabies and everything so i i would like to thank all of you and this is amazing and uh yeah. Great. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring back some of the artists and and uh, maybe if we have some some questions uh, from them or uh, if the artists have questions of the of each other, um, that would that would be great. Uh, so, uh, Karuba or Valentina, do you have any uh, questions you want to ask the the artists? I almost fell asleep. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you, you really did your job well. <laughs> because this is a lullaby, so I... Oh, my guys, it's so... It's an infinite um, vitality of your soul. Thank That's you. true. It's really amazing. I enjoy Thank your you. also. And especially right now in this... Uh, uh, you know problems everywhere and I really like the you know Black Lives uh, Matter and it's bring to the world so I really you know think sometimes I thought like like Jesus Christ um, George Floyd he's he's doing something for the you know for the oppressed uh, people and uh, so I'm really glad in this COVID time it uh, it happened. Yeah, I think everyone was uh, beautiful. I love all the lullabies. Uh, I'm like a Valentina. I was uh, wanting to take a little nap. It felt wonderful. Thank you, guys. Were beautiful. Thank you. And thank you. I think this was beautiful. We needed that, it, especially this time. We really needed that. So yeah, uh, do do anybody has question or anything before we let these amazing people go? Use the chance and opportunity to ask them questions, or maybe the artists you want to ask each other questions or before. Thank uh, you very much, uh, Hosni and Chris, to organize this such a um, soulful, warm event, which is very rare in our time. <laughs> during all the problem, all the technologies, all that stuff. And we forgot how you see people just came outside at evening, sit down and, and sing for hours, right? And you kind of bring it back. Thank you very much. Thank you. All, all singers, that was very different and a very uh, variety of uh, singing. And it's a new thing to learn too. Thank you. There is a there is a question out there, uh, and maybe anyone can answer this. Is uh, is there any um, how much improvisation are there in lullabies? Uh, do you, uh, to some of the lullaby singers, do you ever add in uh, stories uh, of the day? Kind of like uh, we saw that with Baritha a bit, how she was sort of uh, you know changing some some words to meet the particular um, um, contemporary moment we're in. You guys, Valentina or Karuba or Wang, do you want to uh, say anything? You want to have an answer? Yeah, it depends. Uh, for you know, my singing is depends like in the different different uh, places, like in India and Sri Lanka. Even in Sri Lanka, it's a different different. 
and even the lullabies uh, contains the the village, the name of the village, and um, and different kind of food, and uh, so it's it is like it, it's always change, change you can change, but the main phrase is ara aru ari vero. That's that change the different words after that. Many places they do like that. Yeah, for, from the Himalayan side, for like um, for example, from Mustang, the place where I came from, it's uh, it's very difficult to get the lullaby. Like there's at least one lullaby, then that's like also it's only like two lines and like sleep on the horse, like or on the road while riding the horse, like sleep on it, based on like that. But there's uh, nothing much a uh, lullaby. But uh, many old people they say there there used to be a lullaby long time back, but then the it's only oral ways, but there's nothing written form. And somehow it's kind of like become endangered, and some already become extinction from this. Uh, yeah, but uh, at the moment I'm working with Sonam Hamo and with Chris and Osnia. I'm very happy that uh, we are finding the way to come up with a new form of lullabies to this new, uh, like uh, American-born children. You know, like uh, Himalayan. Valentina, do you have anything? Um, in in uh, Russian lullabies, uh, the women used to sing what was yesterday. I mean, how they was going on, <laughs> and uh, the the melody stayed the same, repetitive, but the words can be um, like my 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 drama is so old <laughs> because she missing her husband or something, so they can sing through their feeling or create the story they see around, like with the cat playing with a ball or blah, blah, blah. It, it's truly a freedom of uh, expression with, with the words and sometimes hilarious. Yes, <laughs> it exists. That's great. That's amazing, I think. Yeah, I feel like um, also in, in the, the languages that I work in endangered languages. So since the languages was, were not written, so people nowadays, when they sing lullabies, they improvise, you know, they, they sort of, if it is a, it's a boy, or if it's a girl and they like, um, like, like uh, share their love and tell them how, you know, precious their child is and like they improvise while singing uh, the lullabies. Yeah. If, if people are interested too, there's a, a lot of the work Husni has done at Endangered Language Alliance. Uh, is on a website called uh, nytraditions.org. And there's a collection uh, called Lullabies of New York. And uh, that's where a lot of the people that are in this project will be putting the lullabies they found. But some of the beautiful lullabies that uh, Husnia collected with some beautiful singers are on there. Um, there's one more question uh, that uh, from uh, Aaron Page, who said, I'm curious about whether any of the artists have imparted lullabies to the next generation. And if their children or other young people that they have worked with are carrying on these traditions, any any uh, has anyone seen this get passed down, where uh, you know your your children are singing these songs to their kids? Yeah, my daughter, you know, she's a professional singer right now, but um, I I was even asking her today, but she's busy today. That's why. But uh, I sang the songs to her, and uh, now she remember the songs. Like you know, maybe after that, or but uh, I sang and I used when she was a child. I used a lot of lullabies to sing, and she's now she knows. I'm Excellent. So <laughs> Excellent. Well, well, thank you guys so much uh, for your time. Um, I will I will let the uh, the our wonderful singers go. Um, and we'll sort of wrap this up, but you guys were fantastic. Thank you for dealing with all the technology and all the insanity, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll do this one day face-to-face. -face. We'll reproduce it uh, in a live setting. So, so thank you guys so much. Uh, it was great. I'll, yeah, it was wonderful. Thanks so everyone. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do one last thing uh, where the, the, the best part of this project is that um, uh, we are, um, the Lullabies of New York initiative is about bringing together um, heritage ambassadors, uh, people that are connected to their 
particular community and uh, to do some research on um, what is the state of lullabies in their community. So uh, there's Sam, Sam Wasu Suche that is here. Um, there's Nazira Maud. I don't know if they're able to come up on the their video. So you so um, I'm trying to bring everyone up here. Um, so if you guys want to say anything about what you saw um, and, or maybe what you're studying, um, I'd love to hear it. Take it away. Okay, uh, maybe I'll start first. <laughs> yes. It was very, very educative. I, uh, the similarity with the folklore, that, uh, the lullabies that I know in Ghana, that I'm used to in Ghana, is almost astonishing. And, and like uh, Valentina said, the, you could switch the words around to suit the occasion and then the mood of the or the people very, especially Ghanaians, when they travel outside, very few families do the lullabies here when they go outside the country. But in, uh, back home, they do they do it very, especially in the rural areas, it's very, very pre predominant and people use that. But in our cases, they, the women strap the kids, most of the time they strap the kids behind their back with a cough so, so that they can also have time to do the house chores that they need to do. And so they, while they're doing it, they are singing and the kid will just pass out to sleep, <laughs> fall asleep mm -hmm. at the back of, of the mothers. And mm -hmm. except where uh, kids mm -hmm. are off school, then they bring the kids in, they, they, they can leave a kid, they, an older kid to take care of the baby, whilst the, the older kid sings to the baby to get it to sleep and sort of, and that, that's the way things are. But we're trying to find out, there are a few homes here in, in the US or outside Ghana where parents, where there's a typical Ghanaian home would have time to sing with the baby when there is no, they don't have the means or they don't want to take the kids to daycare. They can do that and then they have, the bad is, is very rare, most of the time they, they were falling and all those things because the, the child could slip from the cloth if it's not tight. And here you don't want the CS child services to come to your door. Or the child goes to school and they see marks in it. So that, that's uh, something that, an awareness that probably we need to get them to lack the songs. And most of the lullabies that we have in Ghana are being turned into uh, on music for, for dances and for for social events. Mm -hmm. well. Some of them are being turned into Same social way. events because the lyrics are quite different and, and energizing and very active. So the the some of them are being turned into social events. And it's amazing. That's great. That's very interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Sam. Anybody wants yeah, to say something? Um, yeah, my name is Ali Susho. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the, everyone, all the artists. So they did a wonderful job. And uh, the, the lullaby sounds very, very good and sounds so amazing. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, um, I think nowadays people forget about, you know, how to put a child in the sleep or how to comfort the child. You know, people think that you just have to buy, you know, you know, something crib and put a child there and take a milk, bottle of milk and put it in the child ma child's mouth and, you know, see, see, see what he will deal with that to be comfort. It's not. Sometimes the child need to hear something. They need to hear something. Or they need to, you know, you know, somebody, you know, hand, somebody's comfort, somebody's, you know, to, to be to feel like I'm 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 with someone. So these songs are, you know, giving us those kind of memories and those kind of sense of, you know, to take care of a child is not just like uh, giving the child a food. It's, the child needs to hear something, need to be touching and all that. So I'm really, you know, happy and I enjoyed the program. You know, it was uh, mesmerizing to me and I, I hope everyone enjoyed it. 
and I want to say uh, thank you for everyone. And thank you for Chris and Hussainia for making this happen and uh, all the participants. Thank you. Well, um, I would like to, I mean, there, there might be audience uh, uh, on the Facebook or YouTube live. Uh, I would like to request if any Himalayan people that are interested to sh share the lullabies, like people from us, uh, uh, Balti speakers or from Tibet or from any part of the northern part of Nepal or also from India, like Sikkim, Ladakh and Bhutan, please contact me and I will love to work with you. And thank you, Chris and Usania and our great uh, lullaby teams for making this event possible. Good job, man. Hello. 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 Can I say something? All right. Thank you, Husnia and Chris. It's a wonderful, wonderful program. It's really, really very much like uh, educational and very much. Uh, uh, good inspiration, but I, I can I can feel I can I can understand the each and every texture of the music. It's it's, it's wonderful. As Husnia mentioned earlier, that uh, from the um, lullaby we can understand historical, contemporary, and traditional, you know, flavor. So now I can imagine how it should be the uh, lullaby in our project. It's, it's a wonderful intention. And I think, and each and everybody um, that represent nicely, nice, nice, uh, nice uh, way to represent their culture and heritage. I think it's it's, it's a wonderful program. It's wonderful. Thank you all. Um, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to uh, to see my program, how I can produce. Uh, you know, with my family member and others. Okay. No, thank you all. Good night, everybody. Okay, thanks. Good night, good night. Wonderful, wonderful language. Okay, thanks. Yeah, my wife also liked it very much. Yeah. Oh, great, great. Yeah, yeah she's here. Yeah. And thank you all for giving us this opportunity oh. to be a part of it. So, thank oh, you, everybody. I enjoy all of the program, and I was here from the beginning, and it's my pleasure to be a part of it. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so so uh, Hassan, we're we're gonna say uh, goodbye and uh, thank you so much. Great job! So I'll, I'll just uh, thanks, thank everyone. You. you guys are amazing as always. You know, it's a pleasure like seeing you, working with you, and you guys are rocking. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, Chris, for making yeah. this happen. Actually, yeah, no, this thank was great, and, and thanks to uh, thanks to uh, in concert production. Mm -hmm. They were behind the scenes here, uh, adding some titles to things. Until Just, next program. Yes, definitely. So okay. this this program was sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, it's a program with CATCH, the Center for Art, Tradition, and Cultural Heritage. Um, it's also uh, sponsored by the New York State Council on the Arts, um, the Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York Community Trust. Um, and uh, it's been a pleasure to, uh, to do this program. We'll be doing another series called uh, uh, Brooklyn Beats Coronavirus Live. We'll, we'll, uh, in two weeks, we'll have the winners of a uh, uh, Brooklyn Beats Coronavirus song contest. Um, so we've just picked our top five finalists. And uh, in two weeks, you'll get to see and vote on uh, the winners of that uh, contest. So most importantly, thanks again to my, my partners, my colleagues, Sal Yususo, Sam, Nazir, Nwang, Aaron, Husnia, uh, and our artists, Baritha uh, Reddy, Valentina Kosova, Paruba, and uh, everyone else. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank take care. You.